Hi, this is Brett Newberry. Today we're going to talk about uh, one specific issue in regard to uh, your, your personal income taxes for 2018. As we've talked about previously, there's been a significant number of changes in the tax code for 18, and we've been in the middle of tax season for several months now. And there's been some challenges for us of dealing with a lot of these different changes. But today we're going to focus on a particular issue that has has grown uh, over time. Uh, it's going to be, we're going to talk about gambling winnings and losses. Um, there are just more and more people that are gambling. Uh, I, you know, I'm not going to go into why, but uh, uh, I'm sure it has something to do with the, the, the number of casinos that's out there now has grown uh, significantly. And so I think probably it's just part of an entertainment thing that people enjoy going and doing. So, we're going to, they've made a few tweaks in regard to the 2018 uh, tax code in regard to the law side, but we'll focus on both sides so that you can make sure you get the full picture in regard to this. On gambling winnings, uh, I'm sure you're probably familiar that if you have gambling winnings, those are fully taxable and they have to be reported as income on your uh, personal 1040. And if you win a uh, amount of winnings over a certain level, the casino will issue you a uh, W-2G, which will give you the, it'll, it'll be reporting the particular uh, winnings that you had for, uh, say, for a particular session, whatever, if it was over a certain level. So I've had, we have clients that bring those in all the time in regard to their winnings. They also have other winnings that they have not had a W-2G issued to them, and they will uh, turn those in, hopefully, to us, because that's part of the law and you're required to report it, whether you get a W-2G or not. Sometimes I have to remind clients of that, that uh, even though if you don't receive the W-2G, uh, you still are required to report it on based on any type of winnings. Let's uh, flip over to the other side, gambling losses. They've made a little bit of, a basically recap what the old law was, and they really retained a lot of the features of the old law. The old law basically is that you could claim as what's called a miscellaneous itemized deduction that's not subject to what's called the 2% of AGI floor. What that means is, is that uh, other miscellaneous itemized deductions, you have to reduce them by 2% of your adjusted gross income. But in regard to gambling losses, you, you're, you're not required to, to deduct that 2% floor. But you claim it as a as an miscellaneous itemized deductions that are not subject to that 2% floor. Um, but you can only deduct gambling losses to the extent of winnings. So for example, let's say you've got gambling winnings of $10,000 for the year, and you had gambling losses of $15,000, you're only gonna be able to deduct uh, the 10,000, that's the amount that you can claim, up to the amount of winnings. And um, people say, well, it's just a wash, so why do you even have to mess with it? Well, it's, there's some other stuff that comes into play in regard to, for example, if you're on Social Security and you have a significant amount of uh, uh, gambling winnings, that's going to affect the amount of, or potentially affect the amount of your Social Security that's gonna be subject to taxation. So that's one issue of why you have to deal with it this way. The, on the law side, what they've really done under the new tax code They've expanded what it can be defined as a gambling loss, not just the money you put into the machines or play poker, roulette, blackjack, whatever. They've now expanded it under the new tax code. It's effective for January 1st of 18. It's going to be good through December 31st, uh, 2025, when this provision will, uh, will grandfather. And which means that it, it will end, and uh, depending on what they do with the tax code at that point. What they've expanded is the definition of gambling losses. So as I stated, not just what you wager, but you can also include uh, other expenses related to the gambling. For example, travel expenses. That would probably be the main one. So if you have a travel expense, you know, going uh, and returning from the casino, that would be an item you could include in your losses again only up to what your gambling winnings are for the year. And so this is a, a little tweak to it. It's, uh, it. it's an issue that, as I stated, has become more common because of people gambling more. 
but uh, it's an issue that I think you need to be aware of uh, and making sure you're dealing with it properly on your taxes. Uh, just briefly, um, and I'm seeing this more and more, uh, I'm not sure how to define this, but if you're a professional gambler, and there's more and more people because they've watched you know, these, these gambling experts on say ESPN, uh, where they just basically make a living from being a professional gambler. And so people sometimes get wrapped up in that and they feel like they can do the same thing. If you're considered a gambling professional, and I won't go into all the specifics related to that issue, but if, you, if you're clearly defined and you feel like you meet that criteria as being a gambling professional, you handle your winnings and your expenses differently. You actually use what's called Schedule C, and you treat it, and what that schedule's for is for a sole proprietorship business. Um, and so if you feel like you qualify as a professional gambler, uh, it, it, it will expand on how you uh, treat expenses. So you'll be able to have additional expenses beyond just uh, up to the expenses associated with gambling winnings. Gambling winnings and then the offset up to on the losses has to do with just people who are just gambling. But professionally, if you're, if you're viewed as a, this is a professional occupation, then you could have expenses beyond, say, just the gambling losses and the travel expenses. But be very careful. You, you would have to, you, it's very possible you could get uh, audited and you would have to prove to the Internal Revenue Service that you really did meet the criteria as a gambling professional. Hope you found this informative. Talk to you next time.